Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Nidhi Garg from Teshpandu College, University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about module Model Organisms in Genetics, which includes E. coli, Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Arabidopsis thaliana from the paper Molecular Genetics. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. By studying this module, you will be able to know the basics about model organisms. Secondly, you will be able to understand the significance of studying these model organisms. Thirdly, you will be able to know or gain more important information regarding model organisms like the Escherichia coli, Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Arabidopsis thaliana. Finally, you will know the application of these model organisms in genetics and in other subjects too. Finally, we will also be summarizing the whole module. The emergence of model organisms has been a breakthrough in revealing important information in genetics, in genetics, molecular, cellular and developmental biology. Scientifically, we define model organism as any simplified system or species or organism which is easily accessible and can be easily manipulated. Such organisms are more amenable to dealing questions due to their simplicity of structures and features. Now, the model organisms have helped scientists to gain detailed insights into studying biological pattern where human experimentation was not feasible. Our understanding about various developmental events occurring inside the vertebrates and invertebrates have been possible and even made easier with the use of model organisms. Now in this chapter we will deal with understanding the role of model organisms, their characteristic features, advantages and limitations, why certain organisms have been chosen as model organism, then the example of model organisms and finally the applications or uses of model organisms. Model organism understanding their role in genetics the use of model organism is a hallmark of scientific endeavor in research. They provide framework to develop and standardize the analysis which is applicable to another group of organisms. Selecting a model organism While selecting a model organism, the following features are kept in mind. Small size They must develop rapidly with short generation time must be amenable to observation and experimentation, availability of genome sequence, easy for transformation, a comprehensive online database, a growing array of tools and techniques for molecular genetic studies, for example, genetic manipulation, identification and selection of genes. E. coli as a biotic bacterium. E. coli as a biotic bacterium. Now our favorite E. coli is a gram-negative bacterium which inhabits the lower gastrointestinal tract of mammals. It is the most widely used prokaryotic organism in molecular genetics. It emerged as a model organism around 60 years before. Structurally, it is rod-shaped and a flagellated anaerobe which is about 2 micrometer in length and some 0.25 to 1 micrometer in diameter. The Escherichia species group has a history of use in natural variations. The species varies in their morphology and ecology. The taxonomic status. Now the E. coli was somewhere discovered in 1885 from the feces of an individual and was named as bacterium coli as it was isolated from the colon. Now the Ernest Haeckel classification system placed the bacteria in Monera kingdom. After reclassification by Mugula system, the genus Escherichia was named. It belongs to coliform group of bacteria under the family known as Enterobacteriaceae. Relatives of E. coli. Many of the Escherichia strains have been isolated and studied. E. coli demonstrates vast majority of phenotypic and genetic diversity. From the evolutionary point of view, the members of the genus Shigella are also classified as E. coli strains. New strains of E. coli 
have also evolved from the biological processes like mutation, horizontal gene transfer and gene duplication. The E. coli strains have evolved from either E. coli B or E. coli K12 strains. The B or the K is the serotype system which is based on the antigen which is present on the surface. The most widely used strain of E. coli in laboratories and research is K12 strain DH5 alpha. Life cycle of E. coli Other attributes that makes E. coli a good prokaryotic model organism includes its simple life cycle and a short generation time. The process by which E. coli bacterium divides and reproduces is known as binary fission. It results in generation of two daughter cells which are genetically identical to the parent cell. E. coli is able to grow and reproduce very rapidly doubling its population every 20 minutes. This can be seen through turbidity assays and spectrophotometric analysis. This feature is useful in laboratory experiments where data generation is a rate limiting step due to larger generation time of another organisms. E. coli can be easily grown overnight. The small size and its single cell morphology is another attribute which makes it an ideal candidate as a model organism. As the size of E. coli is small, billions of cells can be easily grown in a conical flask, therefore allowing many experiments to be carried out. Most importantly, E. coli can be easily genetically manipulated which makes it a favorite choice of model organism to be used in science till date. Now, in addition to its ability to thrive in stable, warm, nutrient-rich gut environment, E. coli can thrive extremely well in even harsh, aerobic and colder environment outside. The ability to live in such diverse conditions is offered an important advantage to E. coli to be used as a model organism. With such an ability to survive in variable growth environment, it can be grown easily in laboratory. Culture media with minute nutrients can successfully spur E. coli to grow and divide. Genome Sequencing Now the genome of E. coli is well studied. Its genome was published way back in 1997. Due to its relevance in the field of genetics and biotechnology, its genome was sequenced and studied. Because so many E. coli strains have had their genome sequenced, therefore a comparative genomic analysis of genes of different E. coli strains can be easily done. Now why do we do a comparative analysis? Because comparing gene sequences give clues to the function of genes, their relative importance and the changes they have undergone over time. The following are some of the uses of E. coli as a model organism. It is greatly used in genetic manipulation, in genome sequencing and in genetics. Genetic Manipulations E. coli is a preferred host for gene cloning. The breakthrough in the field of biotechnology was seen when Cohen and Stanley genetically manipulated E. coli and developed the use of restriction enzymes to create recombinant DNA. With the ease of manipulations, it is also used as an intelligent host for the production of heterologous proteins. It involves the use of a plasmid to introduce foreign genes into the microbe. Once standardized, the protein production can be enhanced in large scale in a fermenter. A very good example of which is the production of human insulin. Genetics E. coli, the bacterium, grows quickly which allows many generations to be studied in a short time. Such a characteristic is helpful while conducting genetic experiments which demands the study of single bacterial cell from billions of cells. The use of bacterium is still a primary resource in laboratories. Understanding the fundamental processes of life such as replication, transcription and translation has been achieved with great success in E. coli. Certain mutants of E. coli have been defined that cannot express certain proteins at saturation growth and therefore die. E. coli was also the organism used to elucidate the regulation of lac operon in genetics. 
E. coli's ability to take up exogenous genetic material under the procedure known as DNA-mediated cell transformation has also made it a popular model for studies using recombinant DNA. Advantages and Limitations of E. coli Now, the biologist uses model organisms to understand about various complexities of other organisms, especially humans, which is placed at the top of the animal kingdom. E. coli is a relatively simple rod-shaped bacterium which serves numerous advantages as a model organism. Firstly, it's genome is fully sequenced and scientists know more about E. coli than any other organism till date. It is easy to genetically manipulate and can be grown with the supply of simplest nutrients in a laboratory. Due to its short generation time, it is able to reproduce at a very rapid rate and therefore can develop mutations quickly. E. coli have been used by scientists to understand many fundamental biological processes occurring in other organisms including humans. An example of this would be that they've enabled us to understand how cells can replicate DNA. E. coli has been serving as a wonder model organism since ages. There are limitations with using E. coli as a model organism. Most notably, it is a prokaryotic organism and the humans are eukaryotes. This implies that similarity may exist in the basic processes to a certain degree, but there are many obvious differences between the two. Eukaryotes are often larger and more complex than prokaryotic organisms, also having a larger and more complex genome. In order to understand or learn the complexity of higher organisms, we cannot rely solely on simple modern organisms such as E. coli. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Baker's yeast. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Baker's yeast. It is generally known as Baker's yeast. While the name Saccharomyces is actually derived from Greek and it means sugar mold or sugar fungus. Now if we divide it, divide the name, it is Saccharo plus Myces where Saccharo means sugar and Myces means fungus. Its species name that is Cerevisiae is derived from Latin meaning of beer. It belongs to the domain Eukaryota. The S cerevisiae measures some 5 to 10 micrometer in size with a round to an oval shape. The colonies are flat, smooth, glistening, cream in color. In the environment, S cerevisiae is found in warm, moist conditions with the presence of sugar. The yeast can cope with a wide range of environmental conditions. The colonies can proliferate from 12 to 40 degrees Celsius with a pH range of 2 to 8. The taxonomic status. S. cerevisiae is a eukaryote, unicellular saprophytic fungi. It belongs to the kingdom fungi phyl phylum Ascomycota, class Saccharomycetes, order Saccharomycetes, family Saccharomycetaceae, and genus Saccharomyces. The taxonomic classification is based on characteristic features like the presence of nucleus, membrane bound organelles. The cell wall is made up of chitin, which is a polymer of nitrogen containing polysaccharide, forming a tough protective structural support in an organism. The plasma membrane consists of a phospholipid bilayer with many proteins. It is able to reproduce both sexually and asexually. The single cell yeast do not possess a fruiting body and it feeds primarily on plant sugars. Relatives of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. S. cerevisiae is widespread and commonly found in nature. There are over 1500 species of yeast, but the term yeast usually refers to Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Based on NA homology studies, these species S. cerevisiae may be divided into four separate species S. cerevisiae, S. bayanus, S. pasturinanus, and S. paradoxus. However, the phylogenetic relatedness has divided the yeast species into two distinct groups, Cerevisiae and Bayanus. Life cycle of yeast. While most of the eukaryotes divide by mitosis and cytokinesis, the cell division process occurring in yeast is known as budding. 
Now, budding is a kind of an asexual reproduction which involves the formation of a bud from the mother cell. However, unlike mitosis, cells are not of equal size. The yeast cell can proliferate both as a haploid and a diploid cell. The two haploid cells, they made to form a bigger cell known as the zygote which is also diploid and then it buds off. Now, the diploid cell contains each of the two chromosomes each pair is called the homologous chromosome. Now a diploid cell can either grow by budding or can undergo a round of meiosis yielding four haploid cells called the ascus. Yeast as a model organism. S. cerevisiae is one of the simplest eukaryotic organisms commonly used in bread making industry. It is a model organism used in laboratories all over the world. Yeast serve as a premier model in eukaryotic biology due to its remarkable contribution in the field of functional genomics and system biology. Yeast and humans share significant similarity in various fundamental pathways including cell cycle, protein folding, cell metabolism etc. Easy to grow. One of the advantage of using yeast cells in laboratories is that they grow quickly with their dividing time being about 90 minutes. It is easy to grow requiring only simple media, technique and instrumentation for proliferation. S. cerevisiae was the first eukaryote whose complete genome was sequenced. Therefore, the sequence of all its genes are publicly available. It is also a non-pathogenic organism and can be easily propagated and cultured in laboratory. Genome Sequencing the complete genome sequence of Saccharomyces cerevisiae was published in 1996. Its genome size is around 121.57105 base pair in length with approximately 5800 genes. Due to availability of its genome data, it can be easily genetically manipulated. Being an eukaryote, the yeast cells share many basic biological properties with human cells. It is estimated that nearby 20% human genes having a role in diseases have counterparts in yeast. The genes with similarities in yeast and humans are MSH2 and MLH1 involved in hereditary non-polypopsis colon cancer in humans. Due to such person similarity, the research has made the study in human cells comparatively easier with the help of using yeast as a model system. Genetic manipulation in yeast. Now, genetic manipulation of yeast is quite feasible. An important contribution of model yeast was the study of biochemical function of gene products by facilitating the introduction of mutations in and out of yeast genome. Various drugs can also be tested on yeast cells containing muted human genes to check if the drug restores normal function. Maximum S cerevisiae vectors are the shuttle vectors. Shuttle vectors are generally plasmids capable of propagation in two different species such as both in E. coli and S cerevisiae. The shuttle vectors are beneficial in the sense that they allow cloning of the gene of interest such as a green fluorescent protein from jellyfish in E. coli which can be subsequently introduced in the yeast causing them to glow. Using the yeast integrative plasmids, foreign DNA can be introduced into the yeast genome through homologous recombination. This has facilitated gene swapping or knockouts in yeast. Cell Biology The most significant use of yeast in laboratories has been in gaining knowledge about the cellular processes like cell division and cell death. Hartwell and Nurse are credited with the discovery of regulatory proteins of cell cycle in yeast. The protein cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase were identified as main regulators of cell division by tracking a change in their relative concentration through interphase and mitosis. These proteins are highly conserved, therefore, their study in yeast is important for understanding their functions performed by cyclin dependent kinases in multicellular organisms like the dysregulation of cell cycle, which causes cancer. Blackburn, Grider, and Zostak made noteworthy studies in understanding telomeres and also discovered telomerases. 
S. cerevisiae, one of the simplest eukaryotic model organism, is known to share many characteristics with higher cells. Many cell division genes, which are critical for the development of cancer, has been studied in yeast. Now, another interesting aspect of using yeast in research is because of its ability to use homologous recombination. Yeast uses the process of homologous recombination for majorly two things. First, to repair damaged DNA. Second, to segregate homologous chromosomes during meiosis. Such an application is also useful in genetic mapping. Advantages of using yeast as a model organism. Yeast carry out fermentation of grapes for making wine and of wheat flour for making bread. It was Louis Pasteur who, in 1856, identified S. cerevisiae as the wine-making and bread-baking microbe. The proteins that regulate the cell cycle were discovered in yeast. They are important for understanding the role of CDKs in cell division. Yeast are used for the expression and purification of proteins in large quantities. An example of this is the production of cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulatory protein. In 1992, Oshumi et al. found genes that regulate autophagy in yeast. Autophagy is an important cellular process which protects a cell against invading pathogens and tumor growth. Yeast can also be used for studying mitophagy, where damaged mitochondria are removed by autophagosomes. These processes have implications in diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Yeast is a model organism for studying the genetics of human DNA repair proteins. The DNA repair proteins are important for the detection and repair of damaged DNA for preventing proliferation of cells carrying a defective genome like the cancer cells. Limitations of yeast as a model organism. Now altogether we have talked about the various positivities of yeast as a model organism but yes there are certain limitations too. First being that yeast is small in size therefore it is not a professional secretory cell. Secondly Yeast being unicellular, it has no brain. Thirdly, many cell surface proteins are quite different from the high eukaryotes, which limits its application in certain areas. Arabidopsis thaliana. Arabidopsis is an angiosperm, that is, it is a flowering plant. It has been the organism of choice by many researchers due to its extensive contribution in the field of plant physiology, biochemistry, developmental biology and genetics. Now A. thaliana is an annual plant. It is dicotyledonous which is about 20 to 25 centimeter tall. The leaves of the plant are found in the base as well as on the stem and are covered with trichome. The seeds are small, oval in shape and can be germinated easily. The plant is cosmopolitan native to Europe and mild Asia. A. thaliana grows in rocky, sandy and calcareous soils. It grows luxuriantly in temperate regions of the world. Due to its widespread distribution in agricultural field, it is generally considered a weed. Taxonomic status Arabidopsis is a small plant belonging to member of the Brassicaceae or the mustard family, which includes cultivated species such as cabbage and radish. The plants of this family are known as crucifers due to their uniform flower structure. The plant was earlier named as Pylocella siliquosa and later as Abrebis thaliana. In 1842, a German botanist found and placed the plant in the new genus Arabidopsis. The genus is of great interest as Arabidopsis thaliana serve as model organism in plant biology. Currently, the genus Arabidopsis has 9 species and 8 subspecies. Of all the flowering species recognized, A. thaliana is most extensively studied. Life cycle of Arabidopsis thaliana The angiosperm is relatively short and has a fast life cycle of just 50 days from germination to seed maturation. Now, as a photosynthetic organism, it requires only light, air, water and few minerals to complete its life cycle. At maturity and dispersal, the seeds are germinated at low temperature, say about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius in presence of light. Arabidopsis thaliana as the model organism. 
Raptopsis thaliana was used as a model organism by Frederick Liebach in 1943. In the laboratory, Raptopsis offers advantage of being easily manipulated, fast growing and genetically traceable. Using Raptopsis as a model plant, a comprehensive knowledge about plant can be gained. This is useful in establishing a reference system research offering an improvement in economic and cultural importance of plants. Use of Raptopsis thaliana in genetics. Raptopsis offers important advantages for basic research in genetics and molecular biology. It is a small flowering weed. The small size of the plant allows it to be grown in large numbers in growth chambers, excluding the need for large field plots. Compared to seed plants, the short generation time of Arabidopsis is also an attribute for the plant to be used as a model genetic system. If given standard conditions of light and temperature, the plant can flower in a month. Now another important attribute of the weed is its self-fertility which helps to maintain large genetic stocks. The genome size of Arabidopsis is relatively small, that is, it is 125 MB. Now, approximately 115 MB of the 125 MB genome has been sequenced and annotated. This small diploid genome size reduces the time required for cloning and manipulating genes. Moreover, extensive genetic and physical maps of all the five chromosomes are readily available. Use of Arabidopsis thaliana in epigenetics Arabidopsis is extensively used in epigenetics research. The area involves mutations associated with chemical modifications of DNA and such mutations are chromosomally inherited. Epigenetic modifications involve the interaction of plants with the environment that affect their gene expressions. Flowering is controlled by a set of genes under environmental influence. Such environmental signals were observed in Arabidopsis thaliana where the regulation of flowering time is in response to long periods of cold temperature. Different genotypes of the species behave differently acting as repressor or activators of flowering. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Firstly, the E. coli is a preferred host for gene cloning due to its high efficiency of introduction of DNA molecules into its cell. It is also the preferred host for protein production due to its rapid growth and ability to express proteins at very, very high levels. The ability of E. coli to grow on chemically defined media coupled with its extensive genetic toolbox makes it a key system in study of bacterial metabolic pathways. Secondly, we talked about Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a very well developed model system as it is a single celled organism with a short generation time and can be easily cultured. S. cerevisiae divides with meiosis, allowing it to be candidate for sexual genetic research. The yeast can be transformed, allowing for either the addition of new genes or deletion through homologous recombination. Finally, we talked about Arabidopsis thaliana, its small size, short generation time, large number of progeny per plant and small genome makes it an attractive candidate for molecular genetic analysis. Thank you.